All right, everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Iman Shu, and we'll continue our journey of Salesforce Developer Masterclass. So, for those of you who have landed on this video as the very first video, take a look at this entire playlist Learn Salesforce Development for Free. This is available on my YouTube channel, and you can start from chapter one, and we have reached a good deal of about 40 50 videos and there's a lot of information hidden there i'd want you to take a look at each one of them and then probably jump into this video we were talking about keywords certain kind of keywords that i wanted to discuss we talked about null keyword in the previous video and whoever looked at that video right don't, don't worry about the kind of exceptions that we got but the idea was to you know get errors and then try to resolve it and understand why those errors are coming right we learn better with errors. We learn better with practice examples. We learn better with actual real time issues that come up. That's when the learning is the best. All right. With that in mind and understanding null, we'll proceed into our next keyword, which is the final keyword. Now, what does the word final mean? It means yes, that's it. That's it, right? Final. It's it's done. It's that's the that's the end. That's that's final. That's what it means. And that is how Salesforce also means it. Okay. Final variables are the variables that will only be assigned once. Okay, so you can either declare them or assign it a value inside the constructor. Right now, if I take you to the developer console and let's try to remove this log, let's try to save this class and let's create a new class. And I'll try to name a class final. Right, so this is my final class. And I'll try to create a method here. Handle final keyword values. The I should be small. Now what I want to do is I want to basically create a final variable so that I can show you how to use it. Now where would you define a variable? You can either do it on the class level or you can do it on the method level. When do you do it on the method level? When that variable scope or the variable that you want to define will be used only within that method, correct? So let's say I want to define an integer i equal to zero variable. This is on the method level. So far so good, perfect. Now let's try to put a access modifier to my method. Can I make a public variable inside a method? Let's take a look and let's try to save it. This fails. So if you take a look at a problem, it says that public is not allowed on locals. This is a local method which is local to this class. So public cannot be applied here. Okay. So it will be integer i equals zero. Where can I create a public variable? I can create it on the class level. So I'll just say public integer i1 equal to zero. And if I try to save this line, it will save a fine without any issues. Saved fine. Perfect. Now what I want to do is I want to create a static variable, right? Something that does not change. So can I do it within a method variable? Let's try to say static integer i equal to zero within my handle final method. What does it say? Same error. Public is not allowed on locals. Static is also not allowed on lo locals. So what can I do? If I have to define a static variable, that variable has to be defined on the class level. Let's see if this is allowed or not. I've just tried to save the file and it saved up fine, right? What if I want to create one more variable public? Let's put static string static string next variable equals empty. Will it try to save this particular variable? I have defined it static, but I have not given any access modifier to my variable. Okay, I have not provided any explicit access variable, access modifier. It lets me save it. But what if I want to provide an access modifier? If I want to say it public, will it let me save it? Yes, it will let you save it. Okay. So these are the combinations that are available. These are the combinations that work, but whatever you want to do with public and static within a method, no, not allowed. Okay. And now we come to a place where we want to use a final keyword to our variable. So similar to how you put public or you put static, you can put a final keyword. Why is it a keyword? See, it turned purple on the console. So this is also a reserved keyword. Okay. Same with null also, right? I forgot to mention, but if you see null is also purple now. So this is also a reserved keyword. Okay, if I say final and I put it on line six for my variable and I try to save it, what happens? It saves fine, which means you can, unlike public and static, you can create a final variable within a method. 
okay however this will only be this can only be done once all right now if you want to create a variable that's final and you want to do it on the you want to do it on the class level right so i'll say final string equals my final value and i try to save it let's see what happens so i've just defined the data type and i've called it final right so it's allowing you to create a final variable on the class level also which means unlike static and public keywords you can use the final keyword on the class level or on the method level does that make sense great but now what i want to do is i want to use this particular final string or let's say i want to use this particular i variable that i have initialized right so what i want to do is i want to say i equals i i equals i plus one and I want to debug it and I want to just see the increment happening okay so I'll just try to say save so what I've done is simply I've declared a final integer variable I've said i equals i plus one meaning I want to increment that value and I want to debug it if I go ahead and try to call the class and I want to call my method that's called handle final keyword values let's try to execute the highlighted it says final variable has already been initialized your th your code has failed giving a final exception on line 9 right so what happened here we declared and initialized the variable i which was initialized to 0 and we said this is final meaning that's that's it done deal you cannot make any modifications to this variable here onwards and on right on the next line we tried to modify that variable and the system did not like it throw an through an error and your debug lot did not get printed okay so you cannot make any kind of modifications on your final keywords that's the bottom line of the story okay the same thing is applicable for your final string right now before using this final string okay let's try to use it let's remove this particular variable here and i want to use my final string from the final class so i'll say final class dot final string let's try to say save First of all, let's see whether it saves or not. It saves a fine. Why did it save a fine? Because this is not a static variable. So I have to instantiate my class and then use the variable. We have learned this before, right? Let's take a look at what does this value hold. I'll go ahead and execute my code again. Execute highlighted. And this should give me my final value. That is a string value that that variable holds. My final value. Perfect right so this is how i accessed it what if i want to access it without instantiating my class what do i have to do then i have to define my final variable with the static keyword or else it will give me an error correct so it's already giving me an error variable does not exist because because it needs to be instantiated but i don't want to instantiate every time i simply want to make my variable static let's see if this is possible can a final variable be static let's try to save this file and this saves a fine and now if you notice line 7 error has also gone and if i try to execute my line this will also return me the same my final value so you can access your final variables by instantiation or without instantiation meaning you can your final keyword va uh, variable can be a static variable can it also have a public or any access modifier yes you can even do that so if i try to put public it is possible if I try to execute it again, you'll get the same result. But if you notice now, you've been able to put an access modifier, you've been able to put a static keyword, and you have been able to, inst without instantiation, access it within a method. Okay. However, what can this be done if I try to access it and I try to modify it? Final class dot final string equals new string. Save. Will this save a fine first of all? There's an error. What does the error say? It says final members can only be assigned in their declaration, init blocks or constructors. So we can only do this on the class level where this has been created. You can only initialize it here and it can only be done once. You cannot do it again here. That's why it throws an error. Does not even let you proceed. All right. However, if I did not want to do this initialization here and I cannot do this here, we know that 
where can I do the initialization? We have a constructor, right? So I can create a constructor public final class and inside this constructor I can simply say this dot final string equals my final value. This is something that we can do. So if we do not want to do this on the class level, we'll have to do it on the constructor level. And on in a constructor, again, you cannot use static or public, but you can definitely use a final keyword and you can assign the value to it. All right, so they can only be assigned once and they can either be declared or assigned a value inside a constructor or on the class level, basically just once. You can use final along with the static keyword and you can use it to define constants. So what is the purpose of final keywords? Things that should not change in the entire scope of your transaction or across transactions. What would they be? They would be your constants, right? Anything that is constant and you are not planning to modify it in your entire course of action or entire course of decisions or entire course of your transaction, those constants can be defined final. So that you ensure that by mistake, no one reinitializes or you know changes the value of that final uh, keyword that's where you would use the final keyword all right and there's one interesting thing to note methods and classes are final by default okay you cannot write final here so you might ask you have public static void right can my method also be final you don't you cannot uh, write a specific or explicit final keyword on your method okay this will throw you an error they are implicitly final see methods are by default final you don't have to write it uh, explicitly same is with the class all right and if you want to actually you know override the functionality we know that there's a keyword for using virtual we can extend our class right and we can override our methods that is one way to extend functionality so methods and classes are final by default you don't have to write explicitly final keyword on them if you try to write it it will throw you an error and not let you save the file Okay, so this is only relevant and helpful for variables for, for now. It is only relevant and uh, helpful for variables. And what is the primary use case? Things that should not change in your entire course of uh, your transaction. Define and declare them as private, uh, final and put that value, assign it once and use it across. Right? So you can just simply say something like public static final string my class name equals you can simply say final class so for this particular class will this value change no it will always be the minor, uh, final class value right so you can create a final keyword here and you can assign a variable value so always ensure anything that is a constant declare it final so that no one is able to change it provided that's what your use case demands all right so that was all about the final keyword we have done the null keyword and the final keyword i'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.